Hello, my name is John Capobianco, and welcome to the very first episode of Coding with Capo. This is a monthly series put on by Cisco U to show you some ideas, to show you the world of the possible, to explore some code, to help you start writing some Python and other forms of code. So today, what I thought we would do to kick off this series is write a chat GPT client with Python. Now this might sound complex, but it's only a few lines of Python and there's a few moving pieces that we're going to explore. And by the end of this, you're going to have a repository that you can use to write your own chat GPT Python client. So let's quickly look at what's involved in today's session. So today in coding with Capo, we're going to explore GitHub, Git, Python, Python virtual environments, Python packages and pip, API keys, environment variables, and finally we're going to write a chat GPT client in Python. If you haven't heard of chat GPT, and this is the GUI web client for chat GPT where we can ask it questions and get answers back in real time from this artificially intelligent natural language learning model, right? So we could ask it, what is Cisco U? And it will come back with an answer. Once it thinks about it, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. Here we are, Cisco is a multinational corporation, so it's not quite sure what Cisco U refers to yet, but that's okay. But this is the idea, is that we can ask it questions and get answers back. So what we're going to do is make a, a Python client for this. So what you need to first do is go to platformopenapi.com and register and sign in. And then up here under personal, you're going to go to view API keys and you're going to create a new secret key. Now you're going to save that, save that in a few places. Make sure you keep that secret because you'll never see it once you've generated it and closed that page. So make sure you record your full secret. The next thing we're going to do is go to github.com. And this is my account. And what we're going to do is make a new repository. So this is, because we're dealing with code, we need version and source control. And this is what GitHub provides, is a web-based, what you're looking at here, system to hold Git repositories. And that Git repository is gonna hold our, our Python code. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new repository and I'm going to call this coding with capo episode zero one. I'm going to call this with a description of um, creating a chat GPT client with Python. We'll make this public and we'll add a readme later and we'll just give it a license of GNU3. And I have to select the owner as me. Okay, so we're going to create this repository. Okay, and I'm going to do this step by step with you and go over what we do now. Once we have a repository, what do we do with this repository? So, what we're going to do and you just have to bear with me a second here, is go to code and copy the link here. Once you have the link copied, we can do what's known as a Git clone. So I'm going to launch my Ubuntu, my Linux environment in Windows, using Windows subsystem for Linux and the Ubuntu image from the Microsoft Store. If you're not using this, I could do a separate episode on how to enable Linux on your Windows machine, but for now, let's assume you have Ubuntu. So we're going to git clone and paste in that repository. Then we're going to change directory CD into coding with capital episode one and type code space period. Now this will launch VS code into a new empty folder with my readme file and my license file. 
Now the first thing we're going to do is launch a terminal and I'm going to make my view larger so that you can see what's going on here. Just give me a second to pump up the view a little bit for you. So now we're going to go to terminal, new terminal, and this will launch that WSL window the, and we're going to uh, uh, the, the Ubuntu terminal. So change directory to root. Now what we're going to make is a Python virtual environment. Now what this is, it's a separate isolated environment. So we can install various packages, different versions of packages, a nice isolated development environment specific to this project. And how we do this is we say Python 3 dash M and then VENV, virtual environment package, which should already be installed with your Ubuntu. And let's call this coding with capital with underscores. Okay. Now Python's going to take a second and create that virtual environment. The next thing we do is say source and then coding with capital bin slash bin slash activate. Now what you'll notice is my prompt has changed and I'm now inside of this virtual environment. Now we're going to need two packages. One package lets us interact with OpenAPI or OpenAI, excuse me, excuse me. One package lets us work with OpenAI, not OpenAPI, excuse me. And one package is going to let us work with what's known as an environment variable file. Okay, so what we want to do is make right click in here and say new file and say .env. And what we're going to do in here is say open API underscore key equals quotation marks. And here is where you should paste your open API key. I'm going to take a second and paste my open API key in this file and then hide it because I don't want to share my key with you. And that's a hint that these keys are very secret and very personal. So do not share them with anyone. So I'm going to paste my key in and we'll be right back. Now that I've pasted my key in, I want to make sure that that key never ends up inside of my Git repository. That would be a very big mistake to publish our key inside of GitHub. So we're going to right click and make another new file called a git ignore file, git ignore. And we're going to say .env and save this file. Now, if you notice in my git source tracking, see how the environment variable file disappeared? That's because I'm telling it to be ignored by Git. So now my key is safe and sound in this environment variable file, and we can start writing our Python code. But before we start writing our Python code, let's go back into coding with capital, sorry, the coding with capital episode one. Now, because I'm in my virtual environment, I'm going to need two packages. Now, Python is neat. It comes with a base set of packages, but it's extensible where we can add more packages to increase the, per, the um, capabilities of Python. So we use pip, the Python package manager, install, and we're going to say open AI because we need the open AI SDK or Python toolkit. And then we're also going to pip install something called python-env. Remember this .env file? Well, we need to work with it Pythonically. So we're going to pip install that package as well. Now, if we do a pip list, you can see that we now have um, OpenAI and we also have python.env, which we can now use as import statements, import them into our Python code. So now I think we are ready to actually write some Python. So let's give ourselves some room and right click in here and make a new file called chat underscore client dot py. Okay, you can see that VS Code, because of my extensions, understands that it's a Python file. And at the top of a Python file, 
we import those extra packages to extend our Python's capability. So the first one I want is OS, Operating System, and we need that to load this env file, and I'll show you that in a second. The next thing we want to import is OpenAI, our OpenAI package to interact with ChatGPT. And then from .env, right from that .env package, we want to import load.env. Right, we don't need the whole import .env. We just need to import this one function from that package. So the first thing we're going to do is load .env and instantiate that. And now what we can say is openai.api key. Let's identify our openAPI key as operating system dot get environment and it's open API key. Remember what we put on the left side of the equal sign inside of our dot env file. So we're setting this open API key from dot open API, the key, as our operating system dot get environment open API key. Now if we did a print statement here, it would print that key. So let's, now that we're ready to go, let's write the few lines of Python. And first is a prompt for us to ask questions. So let's say question equals input. We need input from the user. And what is our input? How about what is your question for chat GPT? Question mark. And then a space. Okay, so that's our prompt, our input prompt. Now what we're going to set up is an API call, Application Programmable Interface. Now remember we had a GUI interface for ChatGPT? Well, there's an API interface listening for these type of API calls. So we're going to say response equals openai dot chat completion dot create because we want to create a chat completion now press enter because this is multi-line and the first thing we need to do is identify our model which in this case is going to be chat dash or excuse me gpt dash 3.5 dash turbo okay with a comma because this is json payload and it needs to be valid json so a comma messages equals square brackets enter because this is an array now of fields. So our role is system. And this is sort of what we want it to pretend to be. And our content here is going to be you are a chatbot. Then we're going to put a comma. And let's copy this to make this easier and replace content not content, excuse me, system with user. And user here, our content is going to be known as an F string, a formatted string, where our question is what we want to ask the chatbot. So as of right now, we have a prompt and a response. Now we have to deal with the results so let's set up an empty string as result and say for choice in response.choices because that's what comes back from ChatGPT is response.choices result plus equals let's add to the string the choice.message.content and then let's print a couple of things an f string that says we asked chat GPT and then our question and then let's say here is their response and then we're going to print result okay does everyone follow so far so let's run this Python code so we're going to say Python chat GPT client what is your question for ChatGPT? How tall is the CN Tower? 
And there is our answer from ChatGPT. So now we have written an interactive ChatGPT client using Python. I hope you thought this was neat. And now we can play with ChatGPT, right? Who won the first World Series? The Boston Americans won the first World Series in 1903. Now to finish our work here, now that this is all working, we need to push our code back into GitHub. So we're going to use VS Code to commit our code. And you can see that this empty file now has this working code and a git ignore file. And we're going to commit this and say initial commit working alpha. Save this file and sync your changes. And now when we go back into GitHub and refresh it, we have our code. So thank you for joining me. We made a ChatGPT Python client. We explored pip. We explored virtual environments. We explored Git and GitHub. We actually wrote some working Python code that's available on GitHub for you. You saw me make the repository. The code is available. I hope you made a copy of your own code. And now we can start playing with ChatGPT with Python locally in our code. Have a great day. Thank you for joining me. And please make sure you subscribe to the Cisco U channel, set on notifications. These videos are going to become a frequent um, episodic release on this channel. Thank you.